in the Pope's most recent invite uh, to all the leaders of the world to a gathering on May 14th, 2020, he stated the following. In my encyclical, Laudato Si, I invited everyone to cooperate in caring for our common home and to confront together the challenges that we face. Now, a few years later, I renew my invitation to dialogue on how we are shaping the future of our planet and the need to employ the talents of all. Since all change requires an educational process aimed at developing a new universal solidarity and a more welcoming society. Now that is one loaded statement. If you have ever seen my page on the site exposing how governments are indoctrinating the children towards a way of thinking that is conducive to everything prophecy says the Pope needs them to believe so as to better control them in the coming days, especially when it comes to educating them to a belief in global warming, even though tens of thousands of scientists have confirmed what the Pope is teaching is simply not found anywhere in nature, or in science for that matter. It's all a lie. And so it is no mistake the methods of educating, or shall I say, re-educating the children, must be done in a universal manner all around the world because the mark of the beast is something that will be enforced globally. And so this is why he said what he said in his 2015 encyclical, which was ecological education can take place in a variety of settings, at school, in families, in the media, in catechists, and elsewhere. Good education plants seeds when we are young, and these continue to bear fruit throughout life. And so, just as the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, where when we are to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And of course, this is done for the good of the child that is taught truth by his parents. The Pope, on the other hand, is using the same method of biblical teaching, but instead he is teaching lies unto the young so as to assure all will agree with his soon-to-be-announced plans to stop what he calls global warming and climate change. And so to further confirm this is the main reason for commanding the leaders to move ahead on this in the May 14th meeting of 2020. Notice what this Pope said in his encyclical of 2015. He said, On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims, and he puts in quotes, man's eternal rest in God. Then it's footnoted on number 168 here. I'll get back to that in a minute. But he goes on to say that in this way, Christian spirituality incorporates the value of relaxation and festivity. And so the day of rest, centered on the Eucharist, sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. First and foremost, notice this man of sin in Rome shared not a single Bible verse to back anything he declared to be of God when it comes to his man-made Sabbath of Sunday. And when they footnoted that remark about Sunday being man's eternal rest in God, click that link for the footnote when you go to my blog. He is not quoting scripture here. He is quoting from the catechism of the Roman Catholic Church. That being said, are we not told to obey God rather than men in Acts 5.29? And was it not Peter, the apostle, that was moved by the Holy Spirit to educate the Pharisees as to their Christian duty in such things 2,000 years ago. And since the prophet Daniel declares the man of sin in Rome will seek to change God's law so as to create false worship all around the world, is it not obvious why the Pope declares themselves to be the successor of the Apostle Peter while at the same time declare themselves to be another God on earth, many times in writing in official Vatican documents? As we in the remnant church have stated for many years, The prophesied apostate version of the Apostle Peter, which is the Pope, is about to use his scientifically proven fabricated fallacy on climate change as a way to enforce his anti-Christian system of worship worldwide so as to assure the damnation of billions. The Pope will claim keeping Sunday holy will stop global warming and all the disasters entailed therein. And as the obedient people in the true remnant church have declared for many decades, regardless of the scoffers that mock and ridicule claim, soon we will most assuredly see a demand for Sunday laws in America to try and stop the disasters. And then all the world will bow to the great apostate not long afterwards. But many still wonder why the beast in Rome is so adamant about Sunday laws. 
And to them, I say, read your Bibles. Stop reading the pastors. Stop echoing pastors. Echo scripture. And see that he does this, the Pope, because as prophesied, Sunday laws are what the popes of Rome have boasted to be their mark all along. And why does he demand all keep Sunday holy instead of the true eternal Sabbath of the Christian God? Well, it's because Satan, who controls the popes and the prelates of Rome, as I've shared in a few videos recently, Satan knows all those that bow to the pope's command must first deny the command of the very God who created and then sanctify the truth Sabbath that he, the son of perdition, claims to be a Jewish Sabbath. When, as the Bible clearly teaches, that same seventh-day Sabbath was created, declared, and commanded first in heaven by the God of creation long before a Jew was ever even born. In fact, all the angels not only bowed in obedience to the law of God, including the seventh-day Sabbath, as we see in Psalm 103.20, they also bow in loving worship to the very God that sits on the throne of heaven, wherein they know under the mercy seat of his throne actually lays the Ten Commandments written by God, proving the dying God of this world can't possibly even change a jot or tittle of that law. For the only way to change it would be to remove the ever-living God of the universe from his throne. And that, my brothers and sisters, is something that will never happen from now on to eternity. And so instead, since Satan knows he can't get our Father off the throne, he chooses rather to get us to believe his lies. And so soon, the God of Rome will die, along with all the prelates of Rome and all those that bow and worship to the beast in Rome, by disobeying the Creator and God, by bowing to the Pope, who is nothing more than a dying creature. And the way to bow to that Pope is to obey him and his laws instead of the law of God. But the elect, the remnant people of God, no, they will never bow. As prophesied and as has already been seen by our God from the beginning of time, we will obey God rather than men. Thank you for watching. God bless.